Okay, what you're seeing here is a remote desktop that is across the internet, across a WAN through a uh, SSH secure tunnel using um, what used to be called the FreeNX protocol, now using the X2Go client um, and server. And it is my KDE Plasma desktop running a open SUSE tumbleweed that's fairly up to date. I don't know if I updated it today, but I updated it yesterday or day before. Uh, so fairly up to date version of um, of tumbleweed, uh, but shouldn't matter too much. I just wanted to show you. So this has got dynamic uh, resizing. So as you resize the window, um, you get the dynamic resizing of the uh, desktop to match. Uh, so you could actually take it to full screen. Now I'm just doing a maximize here so you can still see my original desktop and you can see me running the entire session, but you could change it to a full screen representation and put this, for example, on a different uh, uh, desktop work workspace, for example, uh, or, uh, you know, run it in a window. I don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, so all I want to show you is... Uh, you know, one of the reasons why I like the uh, um, the compressed X uh, protocol over uh, strip painters like VNC and even Linux's RDP implementation, which still uses that same VNC style strip painting technique to do remote desktop, um, the compressed uh, X protocol uh, handles a lot of shortcutting of things uh, because it understands uh, the X11 network protocol and what it can uh, and can I get away with. And so while it has some elements of the same, the same inefficiencies that you see in BNC and RDP, it also has some other uh, things that uh, that can generally make things uh, incredibly fast. So, my, I do not possess a uh, a large pipe uh, to the internet. So I am at my house. I have a DSL, old school DSL, uh, with a 50 megabit down and a 10 up. Okay, so just kind of telling you. So. I, while that's still pretty fast in my book and my usage of FreeNX and X2Go date back to the days of modem technology and doing things over 56K, our screen resolutions were perhaps considerably different at the time and we were satisfied with like a, a 1024 by 768 presentation you know, of our desktops back then in those days and things were very performant. You know, in fact, and this is, I'll just throw this out there. Uh, at the time, because this is back in, uh, you know, the 2000 time period, for example, um, uh, the RDP protocol was not what it is today, Windows-wise. And this, and this is, this is, so, this is a true statement. You could get better performance connecting to a Linux box over FreeNX protocol then, and then RDPing to a Windows host than directly RDPing to a Windows host. I kid you not. So you're, you had, in many ways, better performance going through two steps. Uh, that was how bad RDP was at the time. But RDP has improved a lot, and of course it's a lot more efficient. It's just that Linux RDP is not Windows RDP uh, and does not take advantage of all the shortcutting that they do now uh, in the Windows space. So what can we do that is the closest to a high-performant uh, remote desktop experience over high latency uh, or slow connections? In my opinion, the best thing today and I need to emphasize that today, uh, would be uh, probably the uh, free NX X2Go uh, method that we're showing here today. So, um, but I think, you know, so 
you can tell, so the, you know, these are full window moves, but you can see some artifacting, you know, but so that's part of that shortcutting process, so don't worry about that. You know, the idea is, is that it should be pretty responsive. I should be able to, you know, do things, you know, scroll up and down a browser window and click on things and, and, and have kind of that desktop experience that's performant enough for me to do things. And, and I have a 1920 by 1200 display. So what you're seeing here, though it's windowed, uh, maybe is closer to a full HD display if you, you know, realize that I have a maximized window here. Uh, so that's still pretty large, you know, for a remote uh, desktop display. But, you know, inevitably, any, you know, everyone's going to want to see, you know, what multimedia does. So let's do that. So I'm going to play a video. This is not going to be perfect, okay? Uh, especially not at this resolution with this large of a video player size. Um, but the main things I want to emphasize is the ability to keep... Uh, video uh, presentation and audio uh, roughly in sync and it does a really really good job uh, fall asleep the dreams of fun where the waves are crashing the only place I've ever known so you'll hear some stuttering there okay so Clearly, just like any remote desktop protocol uh, going across, you know, a non-high-speed, low-latency uh, network connect, there's going to be some stutters and things. But it actually manages it quite well and, again, keeps things going pretty well. It's, it's you know, here, of course, this has got music and, and things where it's, it's a lot more noticeable to the ear versus if you were to watch somebody doing a podcast or a, a video talk, you know, speech is a little bit more forgiving. You can actually, you know, forgive some of those little glitches in the audio, just as long as you can still pretty much make out what they're saying and everything as they're doing the presentation. And so this actually works pretty well. But, you know, if you wanted to increase the performance, like I could break this down and say, hey, let's watch it picture in a picture, you know, and then we can, like, you know, you can choose to, you know, determine what scale or whatever you want to, to make this to help out a little bit with performance. You got to remember it's multimedia, so it's going to be both video and audio. But let's let's play this to see if it improves a little bit. Now, now the future has made. I see the fire in the sky. I see it all around me. So anyway, as you can see, I mean, you know, was it that much better? Maybe not. You know, maybe, you know, we're still getting the efficiencies of the compressed X protocol. And so we're, you know, maybe it didn't improve it that much as far as the, uh, the audio glitching goes. And of course, I'm dealing with a, you know, the corporate VPN here that's also involved in the connection on top of that. So I've got encryption on, on encryption. I've got an encrypted tunnel running on top of an encrypted connection and I've got that 50, that asymmetrical DSL 5010 that I'm dealing with and yet it's still delivering in my opinion pretty good performance. So uh, certainly good enough for productivity work. I'll tell you that for sure. Multimedia, if you're going to watch YouTube, I wouldn't use this like for a Teams chat or a Zoom call or anything like that where video is involved, uh, it probably is, a lot, is too much for something like that. But it might work, you know, uh, for audio only or something like that. But, you know, I could still see people on the other end saying, dude, you know, your connection cuts out a little bit. You know, and I, it's like, well, you know, hey, it's coming through a remote desktop. I'm not really <laughs> using this at my desk. I'm actually using this 
um, at some remote location. In this case, it's going to an actual data center. You know, this is actually running on data center hardware, but it's old. It's old data center hardware. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's our own hardware. It's not, you know, some kind of Amazon cloud or something that might have infinite scalable resources or anything like that. So, um, so it's, it's, it's okay stuff. It's not bad stuff. Don't get me wrong. It's just, uh, but I, I think it's, that's regardless. All that compute, all that technology has nothing to do with the problems of just getting the data across the wire in an efficient manner. And that's going to be your, your chief bottleneck here. And uh, FreeNX and X2Go, here, which is uh, the underlying premise of X2Go, is, uh, in my opinion, today the most efficient way to do a remote desktop. I emphasize today because what is coming, we're getting rid of X protocol. And so in the future, everything's going to shift to Wayland's uh, compositor style, uh, blasting full, full frame style presentation mode. And there just isn't, and there may never be, a, an efficient remote desktop under that paradigm. Uh, let me repeat that because that's probably going to fall on deaf ears. There may never be ever an efficient remote desktop paradigm under Wayland. And I can repeat that again if you need to hear it again. And the reason is because of the way it works. It, you know, where X11 was designed from the get-go to be a wire network protocol that manages rectangles, though we do other things with it now, but that was like its primary, you know, job in life. Uh, Wayland doesn't, it has nothing to do with that. It's it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different animal. It's not even close. And so we may be back to, at best, improving our strip painting technologies uh, like VNC uh, in the Wayland space and just having to live with that as the most efficient way to do things. Now, it's possible that over time we start talking about composited viewports and viewports inside of viewports, and we might be able to uh, create accelerated pipes, you know, for individual things like a multimedia or a video playback, maybe tapping into uh, remote uh, acceleration and things of that nature. But I think we're... I, for right now, I think we're kind of far away from that. So, so I, so I do want to emphasize might not because, you know, we may not be able to see anything this efficient for quite some time. It's just going to be a shame in the gap. So as that, you know, as people kill off Zorg, you know, X11, um, or Zorg in particular, because X11 is going to stay around for a while. We have X Wayland, you know, but but uh, as we kill off Zorg and shift everything to Wayland, its compositors, uh, and even X Wayland, things like what we're seeing here will disappear if that all gets shut down. And in my opinion, we'll all be unhappy. We'll say, gee, we used to have something that was pretty cool, and we lost that. Uh, but the Wayland people, it's not on their agenda. It's not on their you know top ten list or top twenty or top one hundred. It's probably not even their top five hundred to try to actually be concerned about what I just said, uh, because it's an apple and an orange again. You know, you're talking about radically, radically, radically different protocols, right? So um, anyway, I want to just point that out and hope you enjoy this video and maybe you'll give. Uh, uh, X to go a try.